I'm Steve. And this is Chad. Hey, Chad. How are you doing? Doing good. Morning. Uh, so this is some furniture you brought. Yeah, these the are all uh, solid maple Willet furniture pieces. Right. And yeah. how'd you get my number? I got it through uh, Barry Goodall. Right. Yeah. And he uh, recommended you. Right. And uh, you do real good work on refinishing. Right. And uh, restoration to right. original. Right. Well, let's take a look at it. Okay. Take it on, got it? Yeah, take it on in the shop. Yeah. All right, that's it. That one. Yeah, it's got a lot of. Uh, well, it's broke here. I, I bought it broke. Yeah, and then it's got uh, like dots, lighter dots all over it. I don't know what's happened. I've had it in a pretty. Uh, controlled environment in my garage, right. <laughs> but it, uh, it, it didn't leak or anything. As you can see, the interior is Does probably that something to hold that up. Yeah. These, these, we can bring it on down. And then this slides out. Oh, that's cool. That's, isn't that cool? See, that has a little uh, hide, hiding. Yeah. No. Now, Willet was made here, here in Louisville. Right. Uh, and Barry, Mr. Goodall, can tell us a whole lot more about it. Uh, but they mostly made uh, furniture out of cherry and maple. That's basically. Now I've seen one piece of wa uh, walnut, well, right. uh, but most of it is maple and cherry. This is maple. Is what this is. This is Lancaster County. It's the uh, line that uh, well uh, identified this with. Okay, that's what they and call it. Is, it is solid. Um, Solid maple, as you right. just commented on. Yeah. yeah, so everything on here is maple. The whole, the, the solid maple tops, solid maple sides, legs, everything. Uh, just good odor, good quality furniture. And uh, right here, right there is the Willet name. Okay. Now they had, they had a lot of different labels. Uh, they have a lot of different labels, and this is one of them. They had about four or five different labels, and we'll get into that with Barry and all. Okay, well, this is a nice maple uh, cabinet that we're going to refinish, uh, and uh, we'll give you a call in about four or five weeks. That'll be fine, you know, Yeah, that's that's fine. I appreciate the attention to no it. Problem. Look forward to getting it back restored and right, yeah. and uh, back to the way it should look. Back to the way it should look. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Gary and Chad. We appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, you just give me a call when it's finished, yeah. and then we'll get back over again. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. you see ya. Uh -huh. You have a good day. Okay. And I'll see Barry probably in a week or two, and we'll get some more information from Barry. And okay. Come on in and take a look at your pieces here. Okay, here they are. Got them all redone here. Yeah, we uh, we did the uh, the outside, like the inside. This part here we didn't refinish. Uh huh. And we just matched all this back up with the original on the inside. Where we had the original color to, to work with and everything. Okay. Yeah, that looks. And we so. refinished it. Well, it up the inside and out. There's your. The old knobs that was the broke. old broken knobs. Yes. Yeah, we turned we turned new ones. Okay, and uh, you can see you can see how we finished the drawers inside and out. Oh yeah, that's a nice just, set. just like Willet did. Yeah, that's a very nice. And he repaired this. Right. Yeah. Repaired the crack, and there was a crack over here. Uh huh. So I tell you what's hard about these these cracks that are like that on these doors. Is they always line up right with those screws. That's and, where the pressure when, point is. Right, and then when you clamp it up, if you don't watch yourself, you use that screw and it makes like a wedge and open that crack right back up. Okay. So you have to make sure that you you know you put the screw in good and tight, but you don't want to push it apart again. I see. Yeah. So you know it's a natural uh, area that gets damaged a lot, uh, but it can be repaired. And I was talking to Mr. Goodall earlier today. He brought some other pieces in. He said this was a schoolmaster's desk. That's what they called it. And sometimes they had a cabinet on top of it. 
Okay. But this is a, a what do you call the name of it? The, the, the fish? Okay. It's Lancaster, Lancaster County. Lancaster County. Maple. Right. That's part of what Willow did. They're most famous, right. of course, for their cherry. Right. But they did some magnificent. Right. Well, this is maple work. This is a nice piece. <coughs> and then you can feel of it there and feel. Yeah, that's a real that's nice, nice spray room finish. Right oh, there. yeah, that's real nice. And then we, this piece. Oh, yes. Yeah, I got that all. Got this all done inside and out. Yes. Yeah, that looks real good. Got to find a hook on it. That's a, our uh, inside. Boy, it still has a smell. Did you smell it when it came out? When, yeah. you, when I opened it up? Has that finished smell? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Then we refinish it inside and out. Oh, that looks beautiful. Absolutely. It's just like, uh, like they say, like new. Right. Well, <clears throat> here's the thing about antiques. A lot of people hear, you know, well, you shouldn't refinish them. And, uh, you know, this is older furniture, perhaps antique. You know, you can kind of say when, one way or the other. Uh, but when these were made, these were made in a factory. Uh, these were sprayed in a spray booth. Uh, you know, it's not no hand rubbed oil finish or anything like that back in the 1700s. So this, this doesn't take away from the tradition of it. We're, we're spraying a better quality finish. It's a, uh -huh. more, it's a more heat and water resistant finish. Uh, but as far as the method of applying it and all that, it's the same. Good. So, Good. so you're not taking away from the quality from this at all. Matter of fact, my parents were antique dealers and they had an antique booth in, in a mall. And they always sold the things that had been refinished right before they sold the ones that were old and grungy. Okay. Well, Gary, that looks real good. Yeah, I'm just real pleased with it. Yeah. Some nice quality pieces, that's for sure. That's them, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I've always wanted to know, how did you get started in this? I well, mean, when I was a, a young guy, yeah. back in the, uh, born in 1942, and my first recollection was when my mother and dad bought a Willa dining room set, uh, in complete the right, table, right. the uh, chest, or the uh, cabinet, right, and the cupboard and the, uh, the chairs, and that was probably 19 early to mid 50s. Was that maple or it was a, a all wildwood chair? All wildwood chair. And then they also had my mother had a bedroom. The four poster cannonball wildwood cherry Willet bed, night table, and dresser. Do you the still dresser. have any of it? Or? I still have, well, uh, I don't have my uh, cousin, my niece. Right. No, no, no. My nephew has the, the uh, cannonball bed, and I called to see if I could get that. They, right. they use it. So I've really duplicated. Right. and buying it. Started probably in 1980 getting back in and now my home in Evansville right. uh -huh. and I've got a, we have a home in Illinois is virtually full of Willett furniture. Virtually full. Now I've got to stop buying it because I'm having <laughs> run to out order, gonna run out, I'm going to have to get a storage unit. <laughs> And, and well, you know, it, it, that's one thing about furniture like this. It'll always hold its value and it will gain in value because uh, there just isn't any more of it being made. It's, it's uh, marvelous. But what I like about it is, is you you seen it or got it, your parents got it when you was a young that's kid. Right. That's and, 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 and right. That's excited my Right. And that got you interested in it. And as you got older, you started appreciating it again. Right. And had memories about your parents buying it and all that. That's so a key part. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, your family will get it passed down or maybe your family will get yeah, it passed down. Yeah, my kids. i got right. two adult kids. Well, that's great. They'll be <clears throat> uh, interested in it. Right. Yeah. Knowing that it came from their grandma. Right, right. Well, and you, you can... You can no, more than likely, that this will be the last error that, that your parents and you and now your kids can inherit good quality furniture made here in the United States because a lot of it's not being made here no more. So you're one of the last generations that can, that can see that. Yeah, and I, that, that's a good point, Gary, and I yeah. recognize that. So yeah. well, uh, I'll keep that close to the Right, just close to just, uh, always. Remember what you have, you know. Yes. What you have here. And thank goodness there's folks like you right. that when this furniture has survived, uh, uh, let's see, 60, 70 years now, right. 
more than that maybe, from the Louisville manufacturer, right. and it's spread out wherever it goes, right. and some of it gets damaged, and some of it needs to be refinished. Thank goodness there's people like you in Louisville, hometown where the furniture company manufacturer was, that can restore it properly. properly. <laughs> so because if it isn't restored right, it actually decreases the value. Oh yeah, I, so, I understand it. And so. the work you've done on the piece I've had, the ones I'm bringing you, <coughs> has been done right. Right, exactly. Yeah. Thank that, you, Gary. That's the way I like doing it. Okay, glad to help you. You're very welcome.